What a sad, sad vehicle. Oh well, it'll be good for parts. Uh, I think I'm going to start start uh, by taking the engine, transmission, suspension, pretty much all front end off. Um, and I'm going to start by taking the hood off and get that out of the way so I can get to everything just a little bit easier. Alright, got the hood loose and uh, since I don't want to expend a whole bunch of effort, effort taking it off, we got our chain to this thing. And we'll just up, up and away with it. Perfect. Now I'll just uh, pull it out of the way, let her down. Good as gold. Oh, there we go. Much easier to work with now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take out uh, the battery and coolant reservoir and the air filter box and washer fluid reservoir and I'm going to undo the fuel lines, um, take off all the wiring and everything that's connected to the car. It's pretty straightforward. Basically you look to see where you know things that are connected run to and you take them off. It's not really rocket science. Um, and looking at my car, you might notice uh, a few things that are different from, uh, let's say, your Buick. Um, I got some high performance options on here. This is, uh, this is a reusable air filter. It's high flow, uh, better than k &N actually because uh, it's much cheaper and uh, see all those big holes in there? The air just flies right through. High dollar, high dollar thing right there. And uh, I've also got this uh, pine panel here for light, for the uh, lightweight. Um, very high dollar rare option. You won't see many with these on there. Um, I may save it and put it on another car. Most cars have that crappy steel in there, heavy, weighs a ton. This thing can't weigh more than a pound. Holds in everything just fine. <laughs> but I digress. I'm going to rip all this crap out and then uh, we'll get back to you. Well, I'm about a whopping seven minutes in. Stuff comes apart real easy when the it's already been taken off once before, but uh, I got to a part I figured you might want to see, uh, and that's the throttle cable. Um, basically, this this part of it just uh, snaps onto there, and uh, just basically snaps off like that. And then to get it out of this harness, like this one is, you basically pull this back, if I can here, tough to do with one hand, but pull it back and then lift up and it comes right out. Just figured I'd uh, show you that before I get everything all apart. Alright, another possible point of interest uh, if you're doing one of these is the uh, uh, shifter linkage for the transmission. Um, it should just pop off of this end. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Just like that. Real easy. Uh, if you don't have one of these tools, I suggest you get one. They come in real handy for pulling all sorts of clips and door panels and all sorts of good stuff. And then it looks like we have the uh, the uh, place where it connects to the transmission here. Just like the uh, throttle cables kind of. And pull that up. I don't remember exactly how they come. It's been a long time since I've uh, done one of these, but let's see here now. I think now that I got that out, I can push these two sides in and pull it out backwards. Uh, I can't do it with one hand, so I'm going to go ahead and try that. I think that's how you do it. Yep, that's how it's done. Uh, you can see I pushed those in and I pulled it back a little bit. I pull it back the rest of the way and out it comes. So, I don't know what I'm going to take off next, but uh, if there's anything interesting, I'll show it to you. Alright, found something that might be interesting. Uh, in one of my other videos I showed you how to relieve fuel pressure, and I didn't really have any pressure on it when I showed you, so we're going to see if this one squirts out any better. Ah, that was weak. They usually squirt out a lot more than that. Must be losing pressure somewhere. Oh well. You know how to do it at least. And you know where it is on the 97 Mercedes. Uh, just a little tip. Uh, when I drain the coolant, I always like to leave the uh, 
pan underneath there because there's always more somewhere in the block and further up the system. You can never really drain it all. Um, and what I did was I took the heater, cose, heater hoses off and of course it started draining again. So had my pan under there to uh, catch it all, or at least most of it. A um, little tip for taking these off. Uh, these have the, uh, where did I put them? The little clamps like that, the squeeze clamps. Um, you get those off and then they're still stuck on there pretty good. I like to take the channel locks and uh, just grab onto them and try to wiggle them free and then once you do that they usually come off pretty good. Another way to do it is take a pick and get in behind there and loosen them up with that and then uh, pull them off. Sometimes they can be pretty stubborn, sometimes you do have to cut them. Alright, I got uh, pretty much everything off the top uh, disconnected that needs to be except for that mount which I will do once I have the car jacked up and uh, the engine chained to my little hoist. Um, kind of got lazy and didn't feel like disconnecting the wires up there so I just took the whole computer and threw it up there. <coughs> it's good enough it won't snag on anything. Uh, I'm going to leave all the all the battery cables disconnected because they're tied to the frame and the engine and everything down there. Um, I got them disconnected from up there though. Uh, so now just going to go ahead and jack her up nice and high so I can get underneath and I'll chain my engine up so it don't fall on my head and then uh, we can start taking stuff off down there. Well this was kind of piss poor planning on my part but whatever we'll get it up. Alright now we got it up in the air I'm going to go ahead and give it a good wiggle make sure it ain't going to fall off because uh, that would suck. And I figured I'd show you why we parked it in the first place, or at least one of the reasons. That, uh, that's a little bit loose. My brother drove 100 miles a day on it like that. Of course, he's a little bit crazier than I am. He just turns up the radio. But we got that. Now we can uh, go ahead and come in here. Probably have to take the wheel off, I suppose, and uh, get the... Uh, steering off. Uh -huh. Look, light guys, light. You can see what I'm doing, I hope. Um, right here is the uh, the steering. Um, I have to pull this boot up just like that. And there's a little bolt right here. I think it's uh, 10 or 12 millimeter or something like that. And we're gonna want to pull this uh, pull this little bolt out and then we'll pull the... Uh, ooh, a spider. Well, we'll pull the uh, steering off of the rack here. I've got one uh, already apart. I guess I can show you a little bit better up here. But uh, all this is is the bolt sits right in here. And there's a shaft that goes in there. And that bolt holds the shaft from pulling out. So once we pull that bolt out, <coughs> we'll be able to get the shaft out. And that part will be done. I don't even have to take the wheel off. All right, I got that bolt out. It looks like they put something on it. Everyone I've ever pulled out has had something on it. I think it's some sort of thread locker. Because you don't want that bolt falling out. Um, but down here, you can see this is where the bolt was. Rode right inside of uh, that little thing there. And I've got it off. I've got it pried off. I just took a pry bar and pulled up on it after I got the bolt out. So, now that's disconnected we can come underneath and I'm going to take a peek but I don't think there's anything else I need to take off except for the subframe bushings and of course I forgot you can't see nothing <laughs> Aziz light aha alright well there's nothing else I need to take off except for the subframe uh, bushings and washers and everything bolts because I'm going to leave everything else on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain up my engine so it holds everything up. And I'll probably throw a jack underneath the uh, subframe when I pull the bolts. And uh, should be good to go. All right, I got a couple of uh, jack stands on there. Um, it's not really going to hold a lot of weight. I just want to keep it from you know, sudden, suddenly falling. Uh, it shouldn't fall all the way to the ground because I've got the jack stands here. 
and I've got my chain which is sort of taut and I've also got that motor mount still in there so it really can't come too far down but uh, I don't want it to make any sudden movements so I'm gonna go ahead and zing, zing those bolts out um, uh, the air compressor is probably gonna kick on but uh, you know what you can live with it now I'm not gonna stick my head directly under it because that just wouldn't be too bright. You know what? I need the right size socket first. Alright, there we go. 18 mil it is. There's one. Five more to go. Of course those back ones are 15 millimeter bolts, at least on that side. That side they're not. her off and she didn't even fall down. Perfect. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take this one off, pull up on the engine if I have to, and then I can drop it all down. Alright, well you guys kind of missed the action here. Um, I had her up in the air, obviously as you saw before, and I pulled out my, uh, my little screw jacks right there. Um, and when I did that, the engine and the subframe and the transmission, everything kind of scooted forward just a little bit. And that actually pulled the car forward off, off of the jack stands. I don't know if you can see that. My light's kind of over there, but jack stands are falling down. So, I guess word of caution, you know, don't ever get under this thing when you're working on it. And when everything's unbolted, because it can fall on you. I actually grabbed uh, this big old... Uh, wrecking bar here. That's what I pulled the silver jacks out with. Um, and then it fell, so I was nowhere near it when it came down. Now it didn't really come to the ground. It was held by by my hoist, but still, better be safe than sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and jack her back up, use my little uh, lift there and pull the, uh, pull the engine off my stand. Um, and we'll start over again here. Alright, I've got her back up in the air. Um, I should have had the wheels blocked off before. Matter of fact, I should have them blocked off now. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of a late for that. <laughs> so, I've already zinged off that, uh, that other bolt. So I'm going to zing this one off real quick. And that will basically drop everything. That's about all that's holding it now. Because I've, uh, I've got that motor mount off over there. So. Here we go. Now she's ready to lower to the ground. I don't see anything hanging, so you're just gonna let her down nice and easy. Here we go. Now I gotta lift up the front end of the car up in the air and try to slide this, uh, <clears throat> this whole assembly out. Should be fun. I think my lift can, uh, my little hoist can chain up to the bumper here maybe and pull it. I really don't know. I'm going to find out pretty quick. 
Well, I've kind of got her chained up. It's kind of a half-ass rig, but uh, we'll see if it works. I don't even know if this thing will pick it up, but uh, you and me are going to find out together. Well, that's not what I wanted to have happen. I wanted the engine to be over here. Oh, well, we'll keep picking her up. Yeah, she's catching on something, so we'll have to find out what it's on. Cut her off. Well, that's what I seem to have missed. Brake lines for one. And ABS line for two. And the other side. And then, of course, I forgot those two exhaust uh, little bungee things. I thought I took those, or I thought I took those off before, because the exhaust is missing in the back, but uh, apparently I didn't. So, brake lines, ABS line, that was about it. And the exhaust. Oh, and whatever this line is right here. Oh, two sensor. Yeah, we don't need that. All right. I think after I get that other one cut, we'll be good to go. Well, there we go. Ain't nothing else hanging now. Now this is an awful lot of car for this uh, little hoist to pick up. But uh, I think I think we can do it. So I'm going to plug her back in. And we're going to try one more time. Sorry, no lights. I need that. do is figure out a way to pull that engine out of there. It would have been real easy because it would have been right here and the car would have went up and backwards but not no more. Well now that's a workout pulling that thing out by hand but uh, got her out. Um, now I can take an impact of that exhaust after I let this thing down on some jack stands and block the wheels Whew. Well, that took about an hour and 45 minutes, longer than I thought it would, but I guess most of that time I was either making video or taking a break, so not too bad. Now I just got to figure out where I'm going to put this stupid thing. Oh well, all done for now.